In the last video, we covered video calls. If you haven't seen it yet, there's a link in the description. But in this video, we're going to cover live streaming, which is a whole different beast. Thankfully, Agora makes it almost just as simple to implement. The way live streaming or broadcasting is different from video calls is you have the broadcasters, which send out the signal, and then you have an audience who can receive the signal and see it on their side. So instead of a one-to-one -one call where there's two people talking to each other, there's just one sending out a signal and another one receiving it. Some examples of this are Twitch, YouTube Live, and Facebook and Instagram Live as well. In today's video, we're going to be building this app where the user will have an option to join as a broadcaster. So I'm already broadcasting off of one phone, but if I join broadcasting here, we have me broadcasting and then the actual emulator putting up some crazy stuff. And then we can join as just an audience member where we get to see me right here. So let's get into the video and show you how to implement this. So first things first, we need to go to the Agora console, create an application and generate a temporary token. So here we have already done that. Once again, if you're launching a production app, you'd probably want to create your own token servers that generates tokens. But for this one, we're just going to be using a temporary token. So you can build apps without tokens using only the app ID, but having a token makes your app a lot more secure and they'll need to have the updated token in order to be able to join that application. And a token server will generate a new token every certain amount of hours. So then you will always have updated and secure video calls. So let's get into the actual app. First things first, you want to bring in the necessary dependencies for this is Agora RTC engine and permissions handler. Let me quickly go through the starter app that we have. So the main screen has nothing special, just leads you to the homepage. The app ID has our app ID information and our token information that we pasted in. So it's all just in a constant variable. Then our homepage is a little bit more complex, but it's not the main part of this video, so we'll go through it really quick. We have this input field right here where we could add the channel name that we want. If you remember, we generated a temporary token for the channel named Tadis, so that's the one we're going to be using in this. Then we have a text button to join as an audience member where we have this function called on join and we'll say is broadcaster is false here. And we have a second button that says it is broadcaster is true here, so we're joining as a broadcaster. Then this on join method gets your permissions if you don't already have them and then push us to the broadcast page where we get the channel name and whether we're a broadcast or not. So on the broadcast page is where Agora becomes really handy. Let's first import all our dependencies. So we need the RTC engine, then then the RTC local and remote view. And the RTC engine is the main engine or the backbone of how the whole Agora system runs. It's their connection to the network. We're gonna quickly add some cleanup here. So whenever we leave this screen, we destroy the engine since we don't need to be using the SDK anymore. And then here's where things get a little bit interesting. So we have our init state where we're gonna initialize Agora. And within this function, we're gonna have to do two main things. First, we gotta initialize the Agora RTC engine so that we're able to connect to the Agora network and all that. Then we're gonna have to set our callbacks for all the events that could happen to our video call. And then we finally have to join that channel. Then for the view, we have a stack of our actual broadcast of the video call that we're looking at and then a toolbar for ending the call and stuff like that. So this toolbar will have a whole bunch of buttons, ending the call, switching the camera, muting and unmuting the mic. And then if we're joining as an audience member, we get nothing. Then we have our main broadcast view function where it gets all the renders, all the different people that have joined and the specific views for all of them and displays them accordingly to however many people there are in there. Now we don't want to necessarily get too deep into the UI because this tutorial is more about how Agora works, but this render views function is going to be important as we're going to have different stuff in here based on whether we're a broadcaster or not. If you're a broadcaster, you want to add your own view first and then any other people that are broadcasting as well. And if you're just an audience member, you just add all the people that are broadcasting. At the end, there's just a couple little extra sprinkles on top for the on call ended for muting and how to switch cameras as well. So let's start making this work. First things first, we need to initialize the Agora RTC engine. If you saw the video about one-to-one -one video calls, this will look very similar for you. We want to first create that RTC engine. Then we want to enable video for that engine. And then this part is a little bit different. So there's these things called channel profiles on the engine. So basically what kind of channels we're gonna have, whether it's a one-to-one -one video call, whether it's a broadcast. So the reason we didn't have to do this in the one-to-one -one video call app is because the channel profile is defaulted to communication. So since we're not using the default communication of a one-to-one -one call, we're doing the live broadcast. And there's also this client role function that we got to set. 
So this is basically saying for the user that is using the current app, what is their role within this live broadcast transaction thing? So we can either be a broadcaster or an audience member. And that's why it was important for us to pass that little variable, whether we are a broadcaster or not. Because here we're able to set whether we want to broadcast some video or we just want to receive video. All right, so now the RTC engine is initialized. We're ready to work with it. And now same thing as for a one-to-one -one video call. We have the event handler, which is the main part of the RTC engine. So here we define all the events that can happen within our video call. We have join channel success, leave channel, user joined, and user offline. Depending on which one of these events happens, we do different things. So if user joins, we want to add that user to the list of users that we have within this call, which is defined up here. If a user leaves, we want to remove that person from there. And if the channel gets left, we want to just clear all the users. The join channel success is for the local user. We don't really have to do anything here because it's all handled in the UI. And then last part, same as with video calls, we want to join the actual channel. So we get past the channel name that we type in here. We have the token that we already have set in our app ID file. Then we set null for the optional info. And then for the UID, we set it to zero because if you set it to zero, then the system automatically assigns a UID and you don't gotta worry about it. All right, so that's it. Agora is fully enabled. Everything should be working behind the scenes now. The only thing we need to do is update the UI with all the new views. So we're gonna focus on this get render views function. Here we're gonna set up a list of all the views that we're gonna have in this. If we are the broadcaster, we want to set our local view and add it to the list. That means the camera view coming from our own device, we want to make sure that's visible. And then for every user that we have added through this callback function up here, we want to add their view in there as well. So you do that with the remote view and passing in the UID. So once again, just to be clear, if you're a broadcaster, you want to add your local view to a list of videos that we're going to see. And then for each other broadcaster, you want to add their remote view to the list of videos as well. So there we go. Now the app's fully working. With stuff Todd has typed in here, if we click just watch, we see me show up. If we go back and broadcast using the cool Android fake camera, we'll see this silly image. One thing we haven't done is we haven't enabled all these buttons down here. I'm clicking on the switch camera and nothing's happening. With Agora, that is way too easy. You can just mute local audio stream. And then if you wanna switch the camera, it's just as easy. Engine, switch, camera. There we go, we can save it, and now we can switch the camera. And you can see everything is working, and we can mute, and mute on this end as well. And then you'll be able to switch the camera too, but it's gonna switch to just another silly image, but you get the point. All right, so that's the complete broadcasting app. You notice it looks pretty similar to Instagram Live and, and Facebook Live as well. Now I wanna walk through one more time what we have done. So first we imported our token and app ID. Then we made sure we added all our dependencies that we needed. In the home page, we needed to request permissions from microphone and camera. And then we pushed the channel name and whether we are joining as a broadcaster or not. Then within the broadcast page is where the most important stuff happened. We initialized the Agora engine. And then whenever we dispose of it, we destroyed it. To initialize it, we call this initialize RTC engine, which we had to call four functions. One is to create the actual engine. Next is to enable video on that engine. Two is set what type of profile this channel is gonna have, whether it's gonna be a live broadcast or a video call. And then setting the current client's role, whether they're gonna be a broadcaster or an audience member. Then the key part of this RTC engine is the event handler, where we set actions on the events for joining and leaving a channel and whether a user goes offline or not. And then finally, joining the specific channel name with the specific token that we have defined for it. And at that point, we had the logic all implemented. The next part came the view. We have the RTC local view, which shows the view of the person that's using the device. And then RTC remote view, which shows the view of any other broadcasters. If you are not a broadcaster, you'll only get to see the views of all the remote broadcasters. And then we had a couple little nice features like muting your local audio stream and switching your camera. So that's about it. That is the basics of live broadcasting with Agora. You'll see video calls and live broadcasts are very similar other than a couple settings. I think that makes working with Agora really simple just because if you have to change the capabilities a little bit, there's not much code that you have to change. If you want to learn more about what Agora can do, make sure to check the links in the description. There's gonna be more articles and stuff like that. And then if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and share. And thank you for watching.